uh, chair sees a quorum on this Zoom meeting and calls tonight's regular session of the Whitestown Town Council to order. I'll start with a uh, roll call, please. Councilman Worrell. Present. Councilman Miller. Present. Councilman Baum. Howdy. Councilwoman Austin. Here. Councilman Wishick. Here. All right, thank you all. If you now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God, under God, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. All right, thank you, everyone. Next, we'll move on to any additions that need to be made to the agenda at this time. Are there any changes? Um, we... Mr. President, we need to uh, make a motion that we add an item A under other business for a board appointment, please. All right. I've got a motion to add a board appointment to the other business items on the agenda. Is there a second? Second. I'll I've got a motion and a second. Is there further discussion from the council? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion's adopted. Uh, two quick point of clarification. Since we're on Zoom, do we need to do roll call votes for everything or can we still do regular votes? Roll call votes. All right, Mr. Sumner, could you please read the roll for the motion to amend the agenda? Hey, Matt, can you take a roll call, please? Okay, yeah. Um, Councilman Rural? Yes. Councilman Miller? He's hey, muted. Martin. Unmute your microphone, Mike. There. There we go. Councilman Miller, your vote? Yes. There we go. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Worshick? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Next, we'll move on to presentations. I do not see any on the agenda at this time. So we'll move on to the clerk treasurer report. Any questions for the clerk treasurer on his report? Seeing none, we'll go to department reports. Any department report questions? Department heads are on the meeting. All right, seeing none, we had no uh, public request to speak, nor public comments submitted before the meeting to be added to the record. So we'll move on to the approval of the consent agenda. Mr. President, I would make a motion that we approve the consent agenda, which includes the following A, approval of meeting minutes from the April 8th, 2020 meeting. B, claims April, 2020 expenses town, April 2020 revenues town, April utility claims, which include water operating and wastewater operating. C, memorandum of understanding for annexation. D, BPEG contract. E, utility relocation agreement with NDOT. F, approval of CF1 forms. G, wastewater treatment plant change order number two for the regional lift station. H, HWC traffic study, and I, approval of a, rel a relative hire in Whitestown Fire Department. All right, I have a motion for approval of the consent agenda, and I will second that motion. Is there further discussion from the council on the motion? Seeing no further no. discussion. Seeing no further discussion, Mr. Sumner, will you call the roll? Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, seeing as how there's no unfinished business, we'll move on to new business. Item A, ordinance for the extending uh, the court closure. As you may recall, we had adopted an ordinance to close the Whitestown Town Court because of Corona-19 and the impact of that. We are um, offering this ordinance tonight to extend that time by 90 days to give staff more time to transition the court over to the county. Right, and that is, that is ordinance 2020-10, an ordinance of the town council of Whitestown, Indiana, extending the effective date of the dissolution of the Whitestown Town Court. Mr. President, I make a motion that we um, suspend the rules and have second reading this evening of ordinance number 2020-10. I've got a motion. Is there a second? Second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Sumner, call the roll. Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. Thank you. Rules have been suspended. Second reading, ordinance 2020-10, an ordinance of the town of Whitestown, Indiana, extending the effective date of the dissolution of the Whitestown Town Court. I would make a motion that we approve ordinance 2020-10. Second. Susan? I have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? No. Hearing none, Mr. Sumner, please call the roll. Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Worship? Yes. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, next, for introduction only, we have Ordinance 2020-11 for the Fishback Creek 3 Annexation Ordinance. Ordinance 2020-11, an ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Whitestown, Indiana, annexing territory to the Town of Whitestown, Indiana, placing the same within the corporate boundaries thereof and making the same a part of the Town of Whitestown. Fishback Creek Three, Fishback 3, Super Voluntary Annexation. All right. Moving on to item C. Consider an ordinance approving the Bridal Oaks Rezone. This is ordinance 2020-12. Ordinance 2020-12, an ordinance of the Town Council of the Town of Whitestown, Indiana, concerning the Bridal Oaks Clark PUD. Um, Brittany is on the line. She is uh, the Director of Planning. Um, Brittany, can you talk a little bit about um, the Planning Commission? I'm sorry, Clinton, it cut out a little bit. What did you ask? I was asking for uh, when this went before plan commission, was it a unanimous vote? Yes, when this went to plan commission, it was a unanimous vote. And this is a PUD, so that falls in line with our uh, comp plan and what had been designed for that area, correct? Yes, that is correct. All right. Did we, may I ask a question? This is Jeff. Yes, go ahead. Did the zoning density um, increase? Is the zoning density increase, Brittany? So for this, the PUD, what it is, is it's with it being a plan unit development, they create their own set of standards for this, um, rather than being the set of standards that are typical with the town's unified development ordinance. So they created their own zoning density based on the areas within the PUD, whether that's single family residential, multifamily, or mixed use. Jeff? Right, but then Hey, Jeff. So did they? Yes. We have the petitioner um, as part of the meeting. Would you like for them to pr present for a little bit to see if that answers your question and then you can follow up with them? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Matt Price, you're on the line. You want to present on behalf of the petitioner? I would. 
Mr. President, I'd be delighted to uh, thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Matt Price, and uh, I'm here this evening on behalf of the master developer uh, for this uh, master planned unit development, which is a uh, Kite Harris uh, property group. And then with me also are representatives of one of our builder partners from Pulte Homes. I have Dave Compton, uh, Rex Ramaj, and I, I think, I'm not sure if he's available or not, but uh, uh, Scott Mayer, the uh, president of Pulte, was also planning to attend the uh, meeting by telephone. I see uh, Paul Kite uh, with Kite Harris so available, uh, and we're all available to answer questions. Um, let me just give you kind of a, uh, an overview of the project. Um, this is located at the uh, northeast quadrant of Main Street and the uh, Albert S. White extension, and it's really comprised of two primary properties, a northern uh, section, which is a combination of uh, single family homes and a townhome section, and then a southern section that is uh, geared towards mixed use uh, development. And what we've done is we have specifically tied the future land uses to a high level of architectural standards that we reflect in the ordinance through the use of character exhibits, which show both the types of uh, designs that we anticipate in the development as well as uh, building materials. Um, to give you, a, a, talk a little bit about density because uh, I was anticipating uh, a question like that. Um, one of the things for this uh, special uh, development area in Whitestown under its comprehensive plan was uh, that there would be a, a contemplated mixture of land use densities in the area. And so what we have here is one section that is devoted to single family housing, and we've set a specific limit on the number of homes on that acreage. So it's approximately, I think, 67 and a half acres of single family development limited to, uh, checking my notes, limited to 220 homes on that 67 acres. So very consistent with, I think what you would find is kind of an R3 uh, zoning classification. Um, we have a, a, a triangle section that is immediately east of our single family home section where we anticipate some future townhomes. It's 15 acres. Uh, we limited our total number of townhomes to 50. Um, so it's not uh, particularly high density in that single family uh, area. And as you move further uh, south at the juncture of Main Street and Albert S. White, we have a mixed use uh, section which contemplates, as the name suggests, contemplates both uh, office, some retail, and potentially multifamily. And when we say multifamily, uh, we also include within that definition uh, assisted living type uses, senior housing, uh, empty nester housing, potentially uh, all within that, that same Southern uh, section. The idea we think behind the comprehensive plan, we think what the, uh, what the plan commission studied when they worked through these issues with back in March is that these mixed uses are exactly, or mixed densities are exactly what was contemplated by the comprehensive plan. And what they do is provide a mixture of dis different housing types that can be uh, leveraged to help support uh, redevelopment of the legacy core. And that's what, that's really one of the driving uh, aspects of this project and why we think it's an exciting uh, addition to uh, the community and will help support the broader goals of the comprehensive plan. Um, I hope that, I hope that answers your question. I will say uh, too that we had a very uh, extensive community outreach. Um, before our plan commission meeting, we had a very well attended neighborhood meeting. We were uh, questioned on uh, virtually as every aspect of the project uh, from uh, future mail delivery to uh, densities to uh, type of housing units. And, uh, and we, we couldn't have been happier with the reception that we received. Um, and, uh, and that translated into a plan commission meeting where we had, uh, we had no remonstrance and a unanimous vote from the plan commission membership. And I, and I think it was really a credit to uh, the development team putting together a proposal that 
that I think really nailed the comprehensive plan and, uh, and incorporates a uh, very significant high standard uh, architectural designs and building materials. And, and me, my team and I would be available to answer any questions that you have. Nathan and I also, if it would help matters at all, Nathan and I coordinated before the meeting to potentially <laughs> do a screen share where we could share some of the PowerPoint materials that we presented both to uh, the neighborhood meeting, at the neighborhood meeting and at the plan commission. If that would help uh, visualize it, we could certainly try to do that as well. And I'd be delighted to do it. We're very proud of our proposal and we'd be happy to share more details. Matt, why don't you go ahead and see if you can uh, share a couple slides with us so okay. that you can get a full, full view of what's going on. Absolutely. And let you should have that ability. I've shifted it over so you should be able to share screen. Okay, let me, let me see if I can make this happen. Hmm. I apologize. I'm having some trouble doing that, Nathan. Uh, thought I had that preloaded up. All right. Let me let me let me try let me try one more time here. Just want to thank everyone on the line to, for bearing with us as we work through these technical issues. As you know, this is not our normal meeting format nor style, so we're all learning as we get through this. There Can we you go. see that? There you go. That's yep. great. Well, I shouldn't be, but I'm proud I was able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, let me just take you through it a little bit. Uh, first, to acquaint you with the uh, the land areas in question, uh, you'll see the two areas that are outlined in red. Um, the total development is approximately 164 acres with the, uh, the northern section and the southern section being uh, more or less equivalent in total uh, acreage. And then the two land areas are divided um, between the single family, which is this area in the north right here, and what we're calling the future development here, which is where we're envisioning the uh, townhomes. And you'll see that we abut the uh, farm heritage uh, trail along the north. And Matt, uh, Sorry, yeah. Matt, this is Councilman Whirl. Um, you said 50 townhomes, was that your number? That's right. And what was the acreage? Uh, 15 and a half. 15 and a half, okay. Yeah. And then the southern, the southern acreage is the, uh, the mixed use district. But let me drill down first to the single family. Yeah, there, there you see the acreage, uh, Councilor. It's a 67 and a half for the single family. And then 15 is what we've delineated for the future development, which is the townhome section. And give you a flavor for the home styles. Um, these are the... Uh, an example of the character exhibits that we uh, provided that are tied, uh, that the, the PUD ties back to these character exhibits to define uh, visually the required architectural standards and the uh, uh, building materials. And then shifting to the residential and mixed use area, you'll see that's approximately one half of the total land area is residential and mixed use in this section. And again, um, why we are indicating that it's uh, residential and mixed use is that um, it contemplates um, potentially multifamily uh, and with that potentially empty nester, um, senior housing as being potential options for this area. And then I've got kind of a, a composite of some of the character exhibits that we pulled together for uh, this particular section. You'll see the kind of things that we're talking about. Uh, this uh, property here 
has a, uh, a restaurant use on the bottom with some office uses uh, on top. This is an example of a, uh, obviously a, a, it's a McDonald's facility, but it shows kind of the architectural and building material level that we would show, obviously uh, likely not a McDonald's uh, in the development. Um, we also show this, this area down in here is representative of the townhomes. And then these are the exam exemplar of the uh, potential multifamily use that could go uh, in the development as well. And again, um, the, the, the architectural uh, exhibits that we provided are govern future development in the project. So they must, the development must uh, substantially adhere to these uh, character exhibits. So that's kind of the, that's the, the uh, overview of the project. All right, thank you, Matt. Jeff, yep. do you have follow-up questions after that uh, presentation? Nope, I appreciate that very much. Hey, Quentin, I have, I have one question. Go ahead. Just, uh, do, you, do you think that uh, the demand for mixed-use developments is going to be impacted by the uh, current COVID-19 crisis? Um, you know, I, I think the short answer is yes. Now, having said that, um, what, what we're finding at least so far is that um, there is still a great deal of interest, I think, in being in uh, vibrant communities, frankly. And so I think what, what we expect to see is that communities that are uh, growing responsibly, that are adding amenities, that frankly are adding uh, housing diversity for a broad spectrum in their community, including the, uh, an age spectrum, are, are still going to be very attractive places to live. And so I, I just can't say enough that one of the things that we heard a lot about uh, during the neighborhood meeting was the desire to see additional opportunities for walking paths and connectivity that this development would present. And so we think that mixed use component just contributes to that because it provides a place to go um, in addition to the legacy core, but it provides another place to go. And so while certainly uh, we all hope it's more of a short-term impact on maybe the pace of, uh, of interest, we think longer term, the fundamentals uh, are still very strong in Whitestown. And that's why, uh, that's why we're looking forward to proceeding uh, with this project. A hey, quick question, Matt, if you could go to that, back to that last slide, the very, very one at the end where you showed Absolutely. all the structures. Yes. So when you were thinking about this and, and looking at Whitestown in general, you know, can you talk about the strategy you were thinking about with what's the characteristics of Whitestown today? What's the culture of Whitestown and how that went into the, these building designs, just kind of to keep Whitestown, Whitestown, if I could say it that way? Yeah. Um, well, I think, I, I think the way we were envisioning uh, the project was we spent a lot of time, including uh, discussing this with uh, Brittany, about making sure that our project matched up with the special development area, the study area. And what we were intrigued about was that this development could appeal to uh, residents that want to live in a in a urban environment, walkability, ability to get to the legacy core. We think that's going to be a big draw to this area and complement it, both in terms of the population that it brings to the area, but also in terms of complementary uh, land uses. And so we thought we want something that um, the neighbors will find attractive, that new uh, residents will find attractive, that business owners will find attractive, that kind of fits in with that urban, um, not, not, a, not a, uh, you know, uh, how to say this, not a ultra urban, but a, a more urban environment, kind of the, the, the amenities that a flourishing uh, suburb provides, but also kind of a nod to 
the urban environment that we think a lot of the uh, uh, demographic existing in future is going to want to have. I want to see in Whitestown. Yeah, I appreciate the thoughtfulness in that and the way you engage the community as well. Appreciate all that. It was energizing. It really was. All right. Thank you very much. Further questions for Matt or for any of his partners? Further questions for Brittany or Jason or on the town administration side? Uh, my one question for Brittany would be, was, was there a part of the plan that didn't receive a favorable recommendation? And if so, can you tell us more? I wouldn't say there was any part of the plan that received an unfavorable recommendation. Um, before it went to plan commission, um, we required the developer to meet with the residents to answer questions. There was a lot of questions from the residents at the Legacy Corps um, regarding the single family development to the north. Um, and a lot of the questions were about screening and buffering as well as traffic. Um, and I think that Matt and his team and um, Paul and Bob did a really good job addressing the residents' questions. Um, they do have lots of buffering and screening. Um, and as well as adopting um, this, if it goes through for a PUD, it will have to go through further review when they want to go forward with the concept plan and development plan as well as primary plats. Um, so I think that kind of helped the residents knowing that this right now is just kind of the first stages as far as adopting a PUD and then it will be further reviewed um, and gone through if it develops. Well, one more question. Um, you know, how is this how is this going to impact the traffic at Albert White and Main Street and what what things are we doing to uh, to ensure that traffic continues to flow and we don't increase the you know dr dramatically increase the number of accidents there Jason and Danny do you want to take that one uh, we are looking at uh, currently looking at this um, and gonna go through traffic studies to see, you know, if a stoplight makes sense, a roundabout would probably make, make sense. So we are working through that right now. In short, we will make sure is this, should this pass tonight and we work through the process of development that we are ensuring that our infrastructure at that intersection and at other thoroughfares that feed into it are well taken care of and maintained so that we can handle that. As we all know, you know, part of the long-term plan of the next seven uh, to eight years is going to be a re reconstruction of Main Street. And this will be a good time for us to get an idea of what's coming so we can get that worked out and worked into the long-term plan. Like Jason said, we're looking at, is it a stoplight? Is it a roundabout? How can we make sure that we get that put in correctly? We're not going to just plop something down with the current infrastructure. We're gonna upgrade it to make sure it can handle anything and everything. Yeah, DPW, um, along with uh, Brittany and planning, they are working um, with a firm right now and they are identifying intersections and solutions. Other questions from the council? All right, further. Um, oh, go ahead. One quick question. How many acres of industrial does this remove from close to the legacy core? Because this is part, partially a rezone of industrial land as well. Matt, do you have that figure or Brittany? I, I do not have the, you're exactly correct, Councillor, but I do not know the exact acreage of the amount being removed from industrial, but certainly one of the things that the, uh, the neighbors appreciated and obviously staff appreciated in their staff report at plan commission level was the fact that this, uh, this development was much more in keeping with the comprehensive plan and existing conditions. So Susan, just about if you look uh, to the north um, end of this project where they have the uh, more of the single family mm -hmm. residential development, the northwest area, you can see, um, Matt, I think if you go down maybe two slides where it kind of shows more of that's just the down one more. So about where that pond is, and if you go south of that and west of that, there's almost like a square cutout. Um, most of that is all zoned industrial right, right now. I think that's a great thing to get the industrial away. 
Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, everyone. Further discussion on the ordinance? Seeing no further discussion, I would offer a motion to adopt Ordinance 2020-12. Is there a second? I'll second. I've got a motion and I've got a second. Is there further discussion on the motion to adopt Ordinance 2020-12? Seeing no discussion, Mr. Sumner, please call the roll. Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. All right, thank you everyone. Ordinance is adopted. Um, if I could, uh, could I get consent of council to jump back to item B, the petitioner would like to present even though it was an introduction and first read only? Uh, could I have consent on that? I'd make a motion to allow the petitioner to present. I'll second. Motion to second. Mr. Sumner, call the roll, please. Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. All right, thank you very much, Council. Sorry about that. Um, so on, this is the Fishback 3 Super Voluntary Annex. Uh, Jeff Jacob, uh, who is attorney representing the petitioner, would like to do a small presentation. Jeff? Jeff? Nathan, is he unmuted? Mm -hmm. Yes, he has been unmuted. I don't know if he stepped away from his PC or having trouble. If you're having trouble, Jeff, you want to message me, I can try and help through. Well, while we try to resolve these technical difficulties, uh, let's put a pin in that and we'll jump to uh, the MS property rezone. That is item D, uh, ordinance 2020-13. Ordinance 2020-13, an ordinance amending zoning maps within the zoning ordinance of the town of Whitestown, Indiana. Zoning map amendments PC 20-005-CA. Um, Brittany, you can correct me, but I, I'm pretty sure this is, there was a couple acres missed in a rezone from a few months back. And so this is just uh, tying that all back together. Is that, is that accurate? I think I got a head nod even though she's still muted. Yes, I got a head nod, so that is correct. Questions from the council on this rezone? All right, I would offer a motion to adopt 2020-13. Second. I've got a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Sumner, please call the roll. Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishing? Yes. All right, thank you everyone. That is adopted five to zero. Next on our agenda, we have consider uh, an ordinance approving Fishback Creek North Rezone. This is ordinance 2020-14. Let me read this. Ordinance 2020-14, an ordinance amending zoning maps within the zoning ordinance of the town of Whiteson, Indiana. Zoning maps PC20-007-ZA. Do we have someone on the meeting? Um, to present on this ordinance, Jason or Nathan? It'd be Jeff Jacob, I believe, right, Nathan? I believe so. I've messaged him now, so I'm not sure. Brittany's shaking her head no. No. John. 
No one has messaged saying they're here to speak. John. It's John. John. Ah, John, there he is. I see his video. He's shaking his head. He wants to talk to us. <laughs> I need it now. All right, John, go ahead. Good evening. Hello, yes, this is uh, John Nearswicki uh, with Wolpert. Uh, we are the civil engineer working on the project. I'm here on behalf of uh, CT Realty. They are the petitioner for the project. Um, and uh, I don't really ha have a full presentation put together. I do have a site plan that I can pull up that I uh, might be able to share with you. Uh, um, we did receive unanimous approval at Plan Commission uh, where we presented. And uh, we have been working closely with staff, uh, with Jason, with Brittany. Um, it makes a very clean um, break to the industrial district um, down by all points. Uh, so it aligns really well with uh, what's going on to the, to the south, basically to the west of us with Fishback 3 that's also here today. Um, but CT Realty, um, they did a joint project for Fishback 1, which is just south of Fishback Creek. Um, and so they saw a lot of continued demand, uh, continued market demand, and wanted to continue to expand um, an industrial presence, um, kind of fitting with uh, the project that they did just south of here. And so uh, we pursued um, rezoning the parcel just north of Fishback Creek to be uh, industrial as well. If you'd like, I can show a site plan. Make the request. Here we go. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh -huh, we can. Yeah. So this is uh, the general uh, site plan layout um, down to the south of the creek right here is Fishback 1. Uh, to the west is Fishback 2. And then Fishback 3 is just north of there, which is west of this existing, this proposed building. Uh, so it basically lines up the property line on the north side of our proposed development basically lines up with what's going to be the north property lines of um, Fishback 3. Um, so we do have, um, we did provide some buffer. Uh, we're looking at putting a proposed pond to the east side to buffer from any adjacent land uses. Uh, we basically are the end, the last uh, puzzle piece, the corner piece, I guess, of the industrial in this area. So um, that would basically be the, the final uh, portion of industrial, any industrial moving north or east from here uh, per discussion with staff. Um, and uh, we did, the adjacent landowner did come uh, very, at the very northwest of our property, he did come to speak uh and at, at the plan commission and i exchanged information with him and uh, reached out uh, but we've got a very good buffer and we offered uh, you know if there was any screening concerns or anything that we'd be happy to work with him to address that uh, he did not respond to my um, attempts to get a hold of him uh, so um, that's kind of where that ended up but uh, i'm happy to answer any questions you guys have uh, the client is very excited about this project and this location. Uh, they see continued uh, demand for industrial. Um, I can say also, uh, Wolpert uh, is working on uh, several industrial projects in the greater Indianapolis area. So uh, the demand is still there um, and uh, we're excited to keep it moving um, here in Whitestown. All right, thank you, John. Questions from the council for John? Mm -mm. All right, thank you, everyone. I will offer a motion to adopt Ordinance 2020 14. I'll second. I've got a motion to second. Is there further discussion from the council on the ordinance? 
Hearing none, Mr. Sumner, please call the roll. Councilman Worrell? Yes. yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. Great, thank you everyone. Motion's adopted. Uh, now, I believe that Jeff Jacobs is now available. I apologize again, Jeff, for jumping around on the agenda in the council. So, uh, Mr. Jacobs, if you please. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Clinton and uh, members of the council. I appreciate that you guys taking the opportunity to meet this way. I know it's not easy and a lot more work on you. Uh, my name is Jeff Jacob. I'm an attorney with Hackman Hewlett with offices at 1620 West Oak Street in Zionsville. I'm here on behalf of GDI Construction. We are presenting to you for your consideration an ordinance um, with uh, annexing, seeking to annex uh, three parcels along 450 South in Whitestown. Uh, this is a super voluntary annexation and is part of the first step in a process that we'll be bringing to you, uh, including a rezoning um, and a few other things in front of the plan commission. Um, so we look forward to your consideration in this matter and um, here with uh, Terry McCardwell from GDI to answer any questions. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Terry. Are there questions for uh, Jeff or Terry at this time from the council? All right, seeing none, thank you very much. We'll move on to our next agenda item, uh, which is item F, approval of expenditure exceeding $8,000. Uh, this is for grant application assistance uh, with BFNS for the Parks Department. Um, Savannah, I believe you are on the line. Do you want to give us a little bit of information on this, please? One second, I'm working to find and unmute her. Can you guys hear me now? Yes. So we are looking into Gateway Park. We are working with Duke Realty, who is the owners of the property right now, to see if we can work out something on that piece of land to maybe put in a playground and a restroom shelter over there. So the grant that we are looking at is the LWFC or CF grant through DNR. And what that would do, it would give us a match grant of up to $250,000 to be able to spend on that park. All right. Thank you, Savannah. Questions for Savannah on the grant application? All right, I would make a, oh, Susan, yes? No, I was just gonna ask, what, what is the match on that, Savannah? It is up to 250,000. Okay, and the percentage then, or is that, that's the, it's a max dollar amount, or is it a percentage of the total? It is, so we would use the land as the match. Okay. So it would be up to 100% match. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Savannah. Thank you, Councilman Austin. Further questions from the council? All right, I would make a motion to approve and authorize the expenditure as presented. Second. All right, I've got a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, Mr. Sumner, please call the roll. Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. All right, thank you everyone. That motion is adopted. Uh, as you recall, we added to other business A an appointment. Um, when Craig Arthur resigned from the Plan Commission uh, last month, he also then resigned from the BZA. So we had one person resign, create two vacancies. So we filled one already, uh, and now this is the second. And so I would make a motion to appoint uh, Phil Stoneberger to the BZA. Do I have a second. second? I have a second. Is there further discussion on the appointment? Seeing none, Mr. Sumner, please call the roll. Councilman Worrell? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Miller? Yes. Yeah. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilwoman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. 
Right, that is adopted. We have come to the end of our agenda. Are there other items from the council uh, to be discussed? No. All right. mm -mm. Seeing none, I just want to thank you all for uh, doing this. Uh, I know that this is very different. Uh, the entire world right now is a little bit different. So I appreciate your flexibility and, and your uh, abilities to do so much work beforehand and to get on here and for the public to sit with us uh, in these, these unique times. So I appreciate everyone's work leading up to here and being here and what we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. I will offer a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Mr. Sumner, one last time, will you please call the roll? Councilman Worrell? Yes. Councilman Miller? Yes. Councilman Baum? Yes. Councilman Austin? Yes. Councilman Wishick? Yes. Thank you. Motion's adopted five to zero. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful night.